What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, I'm going to walk you through what my latest draft is looking like. What changes have I made since the last video? And have I improved that midfield, which lots of you absolutely slated me for in the comments? If you enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button and if you want to get a sense check for how your draft is looking you can get it rated for free over on fantasy football hub using the links in the description below and also throughout the season the tool will suggest you transfers to look through and stuff like that if you want to make use of that plus all the other tools they have there is 50 percent off at the moment and as always links in the description below so as always let's start with the defensive players now in goal i finally moved away from robert sanchez there's just a bit too much uncertainty about that chelsea goalkeeper position and they've now signed jorgensen as well so as well as him they've got sanchez petrovic and kepper i'm sure chelsea will loan out or sell one or two of those players but I just can't be confident about who the number one is going to be. And at the time of recording, Jorgensen hasn't even been priced yet. If he goes at 4.5 and Maresca comes out and says, this guy is my number one, I might still be tempted. But even in that scenario, if things don't start well, he may end up changing goalkeeper in the first few weeks. So for now, I'm just not going with that potential hassle. And instead, I've gone for Flecken at Brentford. And the nice thing about him is you can get Brentford's backup goalkeeper for 4 million in Valdemarsen. So if something happens to Flecken, you're not necessarily forced into a transfer because you've got their backup goalkeeper on the bench. You could also do the same with West Ham, for example, Ariola and Fabianski. But I think the opening kind of 8 to 10 fixtures probably sway me more towards Brentford. It's not an absolute must to go for a 4.5 and 4 million combination from the same club if you prefer the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper or Crystal Palace whoever it may be do that instead and just choose a four million from a different club but for now I think that uh, that works out pretty well the, the opening few fixtures for Brentford are not necessarily ideal in that they've got Liverpool away game week two City away four and Spurs away five but unless I'm absolutely sure I'm going to wild card early I want to leave my options open to have a good long-term pick and Flecken's fixtures after game week five get quite nice again for quite a while so if I decide to delay the wild card I think he's a good 4.5 long-term pick if by game week one I'm absolutely certain I'm going to wild card in game weeks four or six which is quite popular I'd probably go with a goalkeeper with better short-term fixtures but I think that as things stand going for a Brentford goalkeeper with the backup is pretty decent in terms of the back three I've gotten rid of Trent for now, but I do have a way to get the money to put him back in this team because I do think I want him. He is going to be the most attacking defender in that Liverpool uh, squad or in that Liverpool 11. And also, I'm not particularly worried about the fact that Klopp has gone and Slot has come in. I know some people think that there's going to be a drop-off for Liverpool and there probably will be a minor one, but I think their fixtures are just too good to ignore. And if other people are considering not going for them with the fixtures they've got, it kind of makes me want to have them even more. So I don't have Trent in, but I do have Van Dijk. I think if Robertson was fully fit, he's potentially a better option. But there is a chance that even if he does start, he could tuck in and form a back three. And he might not be as attacking as someone like Trent. So I think Van Dijk is probably the safer pick right now in terms of fitness and minutes. And he does have set-piece threat as well. Uh, and, I, and again, I just look at the fixtures that Liverpool have got. In terms of Ipswich away game week one, Brentford at home in two, Forest at home in four, Bournemouth at home in five, Wolves away in six. There's just not many fixtures in the first six to seven where I'm worried about playing them. So I do want at least one of their defenders. And if I can find a way to fit Trent in and get the money as well, I may even go for the double up. And if you look at the ownership, like Trent is on 21.2, uh, Van Dijk is at 11.5. Someone like Saliba is at 41%. And I think for what it's worth, right, Arsenal defence is incredible and they've got a really good chance of clean sheets in game weeks one and three in particular. But again, their fixtures in game weeks two, four and five are all away to Villa, Spurs and Man City. So I feel like I can maybe bet against that. And if I do start with Trent and Van Dijk, Van Dijk to an Arsenal defender in game week six looks like a pretty good uh, option to go with. So I'm pretty high on Liverpool defence and Van Dijk's in the team. My other six million is Vardiol. I don't think I would go for the Liverpool double up unless it was with Trent or unless Robertson was fully fit. And I just think there's too many concerns about his injury at the moment to go there. So Vardy is my second six million. Not a great fixture in game week one, but Ipswich at home in game week two. And then game weeks three is West Ham away and four is Brentford at home. And I do think he's going to start the season. The only thing I'm a little bit unsure about 
is whether he's going to be as attacking as last season, especially the end of last season. Because if he's not, I'm actually not that bothered about him as a pick. Because yes, the Man City defence is good, but if he loses that attacking potential, and there is a risk longer term to his minutes, is it worth the hassle to start with him? So I could move to like an Arsenal defender instead. Part of me is wondering whether I should just forget about the fact I talked about avoiding Parra and put him in for only 5.5, especially with Leicester away, Everton at home, first two games. But I do think there's going to be a lack of clean sheets for Spurs early on. So for now, I've stuck to Van Dijk and Vardiol. But I'd love that to be Van Dijk and Trent instead. I think I'm going to back against Arsenal defence early on because of the fixtures and then look to bring them in later, possibly even wildcard. But that's not completely set in stone. And for what it's worth, kind of a side point, I'm still fairly undecided about most of the picks in terms of who's locked in. There's probably only one or two players that are even close to that level. And that just goes to show that FPL have probably nailed the pricing. Uh, but if I can, I do want two premium defenders. In terms of my 4.5s, because I've got Flecken in goal, I've dropped the rotation between... Who did I have before? I think I had Pinnock or Ben Mee plus a Crystal Palace defender. Instead, I've gone for a Nottingham Forest defender and, and Brighton as well. So my Brighton defender is Dunk. 4.5 he'll be absolutely nailed on does have some set piece threat as well and i've gone for nico williams now again i'm not set on nottingham forest ain't sorry ain't <laughs> let me get that right which nottingham forest defender it's going to be but they do keep playing with wing backs in pre-season and if i can get the one that's going to start regularly i quite like the idea of that i think it'll be nico williams and anya but they do have quite a few options so i need to keep an eye on pre-season most of the players have played 45 minutes in the game so far the ones that have been available for pre-season so if nico williams is going to play i think he's pretty decent and basically the rotation for those two players is playing the nottingham forest defender for the first three weeks so if i just quickly uh, show you it here on the my team tool by the way if you haven't checked this out already you can literally just import your team from a screenshot which is what i'm going to do the one that i use for this video and i'm just going to show you how well this defensive setup works so i've set the team for game week one just to speed things up a bit and essentially nico williams has got bournemouth at home game week one southampton away game week two and then wolves at home game week three and with the likes of van dyke and vardio your premium defenders you're going to play them most weeks anyway so you don't really need to worry about them until the fixtures really turn and then in game week four, you bring Lewis Duncan, Fripps, which are home. Game week five, he's got Forrest at home. Game week six, it's Nico Williams back in for Fulham at home. And at this point, I'm considering doing Vardiol to an Arsenal defender because their fixtures turn as well. And then in game week seven, where Nico Williams and um, Lewis Dunk have got poor fixtures, you've got Fass against Bournemouth at home for Leicester, who's quite a nice option to have on the bench. So I think that works pretty well to the point where you're not likely outside of injuries to have a huge amount of substitutions to make. On the 4 million defender, I do quite like Barco at Brighton if he's going to play through to game weeks 4 and 5, but there is probably a bit of a risk with his minutes there. And also, if I'm going to go for the Forest and Brighton rotation, I don't really want to Brighton defender. So if I end up going for, I don't know, Palace and Brentford or something like that, I might put Barco in. But I think Fast at uh, Leicester is just a pretty solid option to call upon when needed not someone that you're going to play uh in too many weeks so just one other thing to mention because i know i'm talking about the defenders quite a lot but the reason i'm keen on a nottingham forest defender is one the fact that they've played wingbacks quite a lot during pre-season so potentially there's scope for attacking returns but also how good their defensive numbers were last year so i've brought up the data here they conceded 1.41 expected goals per match last season which puts them in the top five now i don't necessarily expect them to be a top five defense but i think they're going to be pretty good for 4.5 million but a lot of people have pointed out to me that yes the expected goals conceded were good but the actual goals conceded was 1.76 per match because of set pieces but i think in miguel their new goalkeeper and milenkovic their new center back they're trying to work on that that is something they've realized and they're trying to rectify it so i think for 4.5 million there is definitely potential there if we can nail down exactly who the wing backs are that are going to get regular minutes. Hopefully that'll be Nico Williams or Anya. But again, we can keep an eye out throughout preseason. I just think the Forest and Brighton rotation works pretty well. And like I said, overall a fairly solid defense. So I think most people would agree that my midfield looks stronger than it did in the draft video that I released last week. I got a lot of comments about that midfield and not many of them were positive. 
But I do think there was a bit of an overreaction. If I just bring up that draft now, I had Gordon at 7.5 as my most expensive midfielder, Eze, two 6.5s in Bailey and Gibbs White, and then Morgan Rogers on the bench, which is where he would be most weeks because it was a 3-4-3. Three, three. And yes, in terms of money spent, the midfield is quite light. But in my experience, people tend to focus on the weakest part of a squad and what's missing rather than what's included. And ultimately, if you want Trent, a £6 million defender like I had, and then Watkins, Isaac, and Haaland up front, then you've got to make sacrifices somewhere. And I decided to do it in midfield. So I don't think it was as bad as people said. Yes, it looks stronger now, but I don't have Trent. I don't have Watkins up front, which I'll talk about in a minute. So at some point, someone's going to have to be missing. I guarantee you there's someone that's already fast forward to the to the, sorry, the overall squad and they've commented, why don't you have Watkins? Why don't you have Trent? So you cannot have everyone, but it does look stronger. I agree with that. In terms of Saka, that him versus Son versus Palmer for an extra 0.5, I think it's a close decision. If Saka is fit and available for game week one, I've got no doubts he's going to start because Arteta always runs him into the ground. The underlying numbers keep improving every year. They were very similar to Son last season. And of course, he's got penalties as well. It could be Son instead, but right now, Saka is the one. I've had a bit of a soft spot for him in terms of FPL for a few seasons now. And if I'm going to go for a premium midfielder that's not Salah, it probably is going to be him. But I could be swayed into Son possibly by the time we get to game week one. Or if I can find an extra 0.5, maybe Cole Palmer instead, who obviously played less minutes um, than Saka during the summer. With Fernandez, I'm not fully convinced I will go into game week one with him for 8.5. But he hit, but he is at least consistent in terms of what he's going to offer. We know he's going to start. We know he's going to be on penalties. And he will go and get a bunch of attack and returns along the way i think fernandez is my ticket to getting trent back into this team so fernandez down to a 7.5 and then vardio up to trent is something i like i don't mind anthony gordon he's been in a few of the drafts that i've played around with but i think what i really want is more information on liverpool like if joss is going to play number nine or luis diaz is going to play regularly as the left winger with the fixtures they've got i'm very tempted to include one of them now they're not my typical picks because i prefer players i know are going to be on the pitch but i am willing to take the odd risk here or there i had darwin nunez in my team last season for example and that is something that i'm really keen on and i think that would work pretty well so if i just bring up the the team here if i do train uh, sorry fernandez down to a jota like that is the money to go from vardio to trent and all of a sudden okay i don't have salah in the squad but i've got triple liverpool for their good fixtures and it might be worth that punt slot has already said he wants to play with a proper number nine i think is roughly the way that he worded it that could be darwin but it could be jota he's so clinical in front of goal and he's going to be back sooner to pre-season training than nunez is and i know people will look at that and say well that's not the kind of pick you go for you prefer safer picks which i always think is a weird way of describing fbl players it, it always comes across very negative but essentially when people say safe they mean players that are going to be on the pitch and probably return quite a lot, which is what you want in FPL. But I don't mind the odd, the, the odd like riskier pick if you want to put it like that. Again, it's a terrible way of wording it. But someone like Jota with the rest of the squad looking pretty decent, I'm very tempted by that just because of the fixtures. I just think at this stage of preseason, I don't have the information I need to make that decision, which is why I've gone for Fernandez and Vardio instead if I've got the money I'm more than happy to have Fernandez like having that player you don't have to worry about that's going to take penalties is good but I think dropping him down to a 7.5 and upgrading Vardio looks quite nice Eze's been in every single draft while he remains at Crystal Palace that's going to be the case I think the fixtures are good enough to include him his underlying numbers are very good he's probably going to be on penalties and he's always going to play so he's in I'm not worried about Elise like some people are and then my two 6.5 million midfielders or in Kunku, I said that he would be back in. The fact that he keeps getting minutes for Chelsea and hasn't picked up an injury yet is very promising. He's going to play somewhere in that Chelsea 11 while he's available. So he's back in. And then I've still got Gibbs White as the more, again, it's not a great way to describe it, but boring pick in terms of the, the open play threat is not great, but he's always going to play and be on penalties. I'm willing to change that 6.5 to someone else like maybe Brennan Johnson or, or Garnacho, whoever it might be. But again, I want to 
I want to get more of a look at the full preseason games before I make that decision. The thing I really like about Brennan Johnson is he's playing a part in all Spurs preseason games because obviously he's available. That's not the case for everyone else. Garnacho has obviously been away with Copper America, for example. So Brennan Johnson is another player I'm very tempted by, but I want to be careful because if I've got Nkunku, who could pick up an injury at any point, Brennan Johnson, who at some point might lose minutes, and then possibly someone like Jota, all of a sudden I got a few issues that could crop up at the same time. But I think in terms of what those players can offer if they get the right minutes, there's huge returns there. And I like the fact that Kulisewski, uh, Johnson and Son are getting a good a good amount of minutes during preseason for Spurs. But either way, much solid, a much more solid midfield, much stronger, most people would say. But it does mean I've had to take out Ollie Watkins, so let's talk about it. And then up front, my two forwards in the 3-5-2 are Haaland and Isaac. And on the bench, I've gone for a 4.5 million forward. Right now, I've picked Stewart from Southampton. I'm not expecting him to get a huge amount of minutes. But either way, that pick would just sit third on the bench anyway. Ideally, I'd love to upgrade that position to a Jao Pedro or an Armstrong who've got better minutes, penalties. And obviously, you can use them when they've got good fixtures as well. But I'm not sure there's anywhere in the draft that I really want to downgrade. And if I did Fernandez to a 7.5, I'd rather do Vardio to Trent than upgrade one of my bench players. I mean, this is the stage of tinkering that I'm at. This always happens, right? I start off with the intention of having a solid squad. And as we get closer to game week one, I start reducing the bench just to get even more money in the 11. I mean, I could do Fernandez to a 6.5. That would be my third 6.5 million midfielder to get Trent in and a better bench option. But I'm not sure right now I want to do it. And I feel like the picks I've made are not going to force me into a huge amount of transfers without injuries anyway. So Stewart's in. Isaac is probably, at this stage, the most locked-in player in my draft. I think most positions are still quite open. And usually by this stage, I've got like maybe four or five players that I'm certain are going to be in. That's not the case this season, which I think is a good indication that FPL have priced play as well. But Isaac at 8.5 just feels underpriced. Southampton at home first game. I've even got him as captain right now. Good fixtures to start. The minutes will be good if he's um, fit and available. On penalties as well. There's just so much to like about him. And, it, and let's say, for example, that I did take Fernandez out to a 6.5. You're essentially comparing Isaac to Fernandez or Odegaard at the same price in attackers. I just think Isaac's just better. I think, for FPL, at least for the start of the season. It's not that Fernandez and Odegaard are bad picks, but, but Isaac just feels too good to turn down. So I think right now, if I'm looking at that squad, I'd be very surprised if Isaac's not in the final one. I think all the other players, apart from maybe Eze, still up in the air a little bit. With Haaland, for the most uh, recent preseason friendly that he played in at the time recording, uh, he didn't play the second half. Guardiola said he had some niggles. He didn't feel good. And that's why he didn't play the second half. So there's a little bit of a worry there that he might be carrying some kind of an injury. The good thing about Man City is they play in the Community Shield against Man United uh, the week before their first game of the season. And obviously that is a essentially a friendly, but often we see full-strength teams. And so that will give us an indication of how fit Haaland is. If he doesn't start that game or he plays like 50, 60 minutes, and there seems to be a bit of an issue, then I just won't have him for game week one. I'll just put Salah in instead and redistribute uh, the funds, obviously, in other ways. But right now, I'm expecting Haaland to be fine. He's got Ipswich at home game week two. For what it's worth, I, I am still quite tempted by Salah instead of Haaland. If I can persuade myself that game week two won't be too punishing, but I think for now, I'm just going to stick with Haaland because I think that's the most likely route that i'm gonna go i could try and fit them both in but i think there's too many sacrifices that have to be made so i'm still pretty clear or still pretty confident it would just be one or the other and not both in, unless we suddenly get loads of good value options from somewhere but i just i just don't see it so i think overall people will think this squad looks better but no watkins who people love no trent either but i think fernandez to a 7.5 is is the key there and the rest of the squad looks pretty good. And with Saka, I can move to Son. If I can find 0.5, I can go to Palmer. I can downgrade to Foden if he's looking good. I think that looks nice. I think it looks good. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you want to get your team rated for free, uh, there is a link in the description for the Fantasy Football Hub My Team tool. And if you want to use the other tools that they have uh, and stuff like that, which I was showing you earlier with the stats, etc., links in the description below for that as well. And there's 50% off at the moment. Subscribe if you haven't already. 
hit five stars if you're listening on podcast and i will uh catch you again soon for another video thanks for watching